Hey everybody, welcome. Hi, welcome to Fueling Your Happy. Um, I'm so excited to be with you. Happy Friday, as always. And uh, today is gonna be a little bit of a different episode. So I hope that you're willing to kind of hang out with me for a little bit, because I really need your help today. Um, today, this is gonna be kind of more of a, uh, you're gonna be like, um, it's like a counseling session, and like I need you to interact with me, okay? Um, so here's the deal. Uh, I have been on this remarkable journey over the last couple months as we've been doing this show. And really, um, as we've been doing this show and as I've been doing more and more firesides with Onward Productions, and uh, and especially since the prophet talked a little bit about gratitude. Now, let me tell you a little what's going on and why I need your help, okay? Um, so, oh, by the way, we're not going to have an episode next week. It's Christmas next week. Merry Christmas. Um, I hope you have an amazing time with your families, and I hope you have just like the best day ever. Okay, so um, let me kind of tell you what's going on and what's been happening because this is where I really would love your feedback and I'd really love your help. And we maybe know each other well, maybe we don't know each other well. Um, I'm thankful for you either way. And I need you to know a couple things about me, okay? Um, number one, obviously, I love this message. This message is near and dear to my heart. It is something that is that I really kind of feel called to be able to share. This idea of gratitude in the middle of life's difficulties and life's frustrations. I feel like it's transformed me. I feel like it's made me a new man. And I feel like it's brought me closer to my father in heaven. And those are all things that are very, very important. <laughs> um, and so uh, I love that. And I love to share the message. But there's many, many times when I wonder why Heavenly Father has given the message to me. Sometimes I think it's just because he knew that I was uh, the least grateful person on the planet. And as the le least grateful person that's like ever lived, um, maybe uh, he knew that I needed to be able to share this message in order to have it really take root in my soul. And that may be the case. I feel like my camera's moving. Is my camera moving? Oh gosh, now it did, huh? Okay, let's try that. Um, and... Uh, and, and so that might be part of the reason why, but at the same time, um, I really feel like I'm supposed to share this message, but then you guys, I always feel like, who am I? Who am I to share these very important things? And I never quite know how to answer that. And this is the process that I've been going through and you'll understand why I'm sharing this with you because I need your feedback and I need your help. So this is gonna be a little bit more of like a counseling session and like a discussion um, and a little bit more of a stream of consciousness that will have a couple things in it that I think will be really helpful. Um, I know they'll be helpful to, to sort of the process I'm going through and I hope that you'll be able to kind of sound off and help me know if these thoughts and ideas resonate with you. And that's really what I wanna do is share some thoughts and ideas with you of things that I've been thinking, of things that I am formulating and things that I'm working on because I, I hope that it's something that, I can utilize that will um, help me continue my mission, even though sometimes I don't know what Heavenly Father chose me for this mission. But nonetheless, let me kind of back up and tell you what's been going on. So President Nelson gives this incredible address, right? This amazing video about the healing power of gratitude. Well, that same week, um, Onward Productions and Mandy and Shane, hi, I love you, you guys are awesome. Um, they asked me to do a fireside with Gaina Lynn Condi, and we were talking about thankfulness. And it was an amazing fireside. Like I always love speaking with Gaina Lynn because she's incredible. And I talked a little bit about the, the story of the 10 lepers um, because a lot of times we associate that with gratitude. One came back and said, thank you. But there's some other pieces of that that I really love that to me are um, really important that sometimes we almost overlook. And maybe we'll do another video on that. But uh, I gave the fireside with Gaina Lynn. I learned a lot from her. I shared my bit about the 10 lepers and some of my thoughts there. And I, I felt like it was awesome. Afterwards, though, you guys, afterwards, I was struggling. I was like, gosh, I like I don't even feel like I'm that good at this. I, I don't I feel like there's so many better people at articulating gratitude or gratitude in the middle of frustration or so many other people that um, could share these thoughts and words better than I can. Like, hello, Elder Uchtdorf is amazing at this kind of stuff. And he, that's why he shares it. But I'm like, how? Why would I be supposed to share this as well? I just struggle. And um, after that fireside with Gaina Lynn, I was feeling that. I was like, gosh, I don't even feel like I'm good at this. Why, Heavenly Father, do you want me to continue to share this message? Isn't there somebody better? And like I said, maybe he wants me to share it because it's more for me. But I feel like there's something in it that, that I'm supposed to share it with someone like you as well. I don't know why. I don't really, I can't give you a tangible reason. 
But after that fireside that night, I was kind of feeling that way. Like, oh my gosh, do I keep going? Do I keep sharing this? My book, Flip the Gratitude Switch, is out. It's been out for four years. I'm thankful for it. There's a lot of the good stuff in there, you know, so on and so forth. It was weird. I feel like the light just came on and I don't know. Like literally, my light just came on and I'm not sure why, but I love it. Okay, maybe that's the Holy Ghost uh, reminding me that we're on the right path here. I don't know. Um, but so here's what happens. After the fire started, I'm like, oh my gosh, should I do this? What do I do? And the Lord was like, hey, Kev, yeah, um, you are going to do this, but I need you to do more. And Heavenly Father was very clear with me. And he said, you need to write another book. And my thought was, really? I, I, <laughs> I don't even know if the first one was very good. Like, you want me to write another one? And he said, yes. And this one is going to specifically be for members of the church. And so that night I knew um, that Heavenly Father wanted me to work on a book. And I've been working on it. And as I was working on this book and as I was doing additional research and as I was collecting so much of the, the scripture, scriptural stories and scriptures that I feel like really helped to underline everything we've been talking about on the show, there was a phrase that kept coming to my mind. And it was never, it was a phrase that I literally have never associated with gratitude and with this conversation of flipping the gratitude switch and, and gratitude in the middle of frustrations. I'd never associated this phrase before. It's a phrase from the scriptures. It only shows up a couple places. But as I was doing research and as I was starting to work on the book and starting to write, this phrase kept coming to me. And I went, okay, Heavenly Father, I could, I, look, guys, this phrase, I'll give it to you in a second. I didn't even know where it was in the scriptures. Like I knew it. I knew I'd read it. I knew I'd thought about it, but I couldn't even remember where in the scriptures it was. But these, these, these words kept coming to me. And so I started to do research and I, I went to the gospel app, library app, and I searched this phrase, rebuke the devourer. And lo and behold, it pulls up a couple scriptures. Both of these scriptures are tithing scriptures. Okay, Malachi and Third Nephi. Both are similar, almost identical language about tithing. When we pay tithing, not only will the Lord open the windows of heaven, but he will rebuke the devourer for our sakes. Here's where I need you. So as I started to think about that, I went, well, wait a second. Why would the Lord give me that particular phrase? That's a tithing phrase. That's a phrase that alludes to crops and harvest. And, and uh, you know, when you pay tithing, the Lord will rebuke the devourer so that like your crops don't get consumed. Um, and I'm like, how does that, how does that fit with gratitude? And as I started to read more scriptures, and as I started to think more about it, operating purely from a space of, okay, I'm operating on faith here, Heavenly Father. You gave me this phrase. Let me go figure out why. I started to think about this. And here's where I need your help. I think that this is a really important idea that needs to go into the book. But it also is kind of, I'm wondering, is this a bit of a leap? Because um, is, it, is it saying what I'm about to share with you about this phrase and about the scriptures and about gratitude? Am I reaching or does it make sense? That's what I need. Do these thoughts and ideas that I'm just about to share with you briefly, do they resonate with you and make sense to you? Is it something you want to know and think and hear more about? Or is it just me being, you know, like crazy sauce over here? I don't think so, because I feel like the Lord gave me this phrase in connection with the book that I'm supposed to write about gratitude. So rebuke the devourer. So here we have scriptures on tithing, that when we tithe, the Lord will open the windows of heaven and he will rebuke the devourer for our sakes. And I started to think about how does that apply to gratitude? And I started to think about, okay, let's not talk about gratitude. Let's talk about what, who is the devourer first and foremost? The devourer first and foremost is Lucifer. It's Satan. Does he devour? Yes, he devours. What does he devour? All things that are good. Anything that is light and that is virtuous and that is holy and that is uplifting and that is sacred. The, the Lucifer, the devourer, wants to devour it. He wants to consume it. He wants to eradicate it. And I said, okay, fine. So if I know that the devourer is in fact Lucifer, if I know that that's Satan, and I know that he wants to eliminate things that matter and that there's light, what are some of the things that he eliminates if I don't plant crops? But what does he devour for me? My happiness, 
my fulfillment, my joy. You see, if Satan wants to consume the harvest so that it can't provide benefit for mankind, what if the harvest for you and me, some of you are farmers, I'm not. What if the harvest is happiness? What if the harvest is fulfillment and it's joy? What if the harvest is drawing nearer to our Father in heaven through the eternal power of gratitude, the spiritual gift, divine gift of gratitude? So I started to think about that. Wait a second, maybe that's it. If pain tithing rebukes the devourer, now I had to make the connection to tithing. So I know who the devourer is, it's Satan. I know that he devours things that are good, my harvest. But how does the idea of if I pay tithing or I give something that the Lord has given to me, if I give something back with that promise from Heavenly Father, um, that devourer will then be rebu rebuked. And I started to think about, okay, well, if the harvest is happiness, then how do we get to the harvest? Well, we have to plant seeds. And I started to think about the fact that you and I plant seeds on a really regular basis, don't we? When we choose our spouse, when we have children, when we wake up and we pray or we read our scriptures, aren't all of these things little seeds that we're planting with the hope of harvesting happiness in the future? Isn't that why we do the things we do, the profession that we choose, the choice to go up and get, get to work, the choice to like get ready. By the way, speaking of getting ready, I'm sorry that my beard is like getting long. We have an ugly sweater Christmas party and I'm going to do some stuff with the facial hair, but I've got to grow it out. So it's not that I've just given up on shaving or my appearance, although it may look that way. Um, I, there's actually a purpose. Sorry, side note, distraction. Okay. So um, the seeds that we plant are the things that we hope to harvest in the future. We plant seeds when we get up and we get ready for the day and we put on clothes that make us feel good when we work out or even when we eat certain foods that make us happy, we're doing these things because we're expecting that the certain act of planting the seed will lead to some sort of harvest of happiness, right? So do you see how I'm drawing that connection? I hope that makes sense. So if we are constantly planting seeds of happiness, joy, et cetera, in hopes of harvesting the happiness and the fulfillment that can come from being members of the gospel, of being members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or just understanding the gospel of Jesus Christ, because it is a gospel of fulfillment and happiness. If we are planting seeds in hopes to harvest the happiness in the future, and, and we know that Satan would like to devour the happiness from us because he does not want us to be happy. He wants to devour all the things that are good. Well, then I can make the connection that we plant seeds of happiness, that seeds of happiness can grow to a harvest of happiness. And I can make the connection that Satan can want to devour that happiness. But then where does tithing come in? And I started to think about it like this. Tithing is giving of something that we've been given, right? It's giving back something that has come as a blessing to us. It's giving of our abundance. It's giving of our um, increase. Well, what could we give to Heavenly Father? That is part of the seeds that we're planting and the harvest that we want to hope to harvest. And if we give this thing to Heavenly Father, will he rebuke the devourer for our sakes so that the harvest can happen? Do you know there are 95 references to the phrase, give thanks in the scriptures? If you combine the phrases, love thy neighbor and love one another, um, there's like 85 of those, but there's 95 instances of give thanks and, and more if you use thanks, thankfulness, so on and so forth. Well, I always tell my kids that you're never going to get all of what you want, aka the happiness that you seek, until you can learn to be thankful for what you've got. Here's the deal. Heavenly Father has given us gifts. Even the trials are gifts. Even the frustrations are gifts. Even the difficult moments are gifts. If that's what we've been given, can we give thanks back to Heavenly Father? Can that be like our tithing? If we give thanks for the things that come our way, and it's that gratitude and that thankfulness that we give back to Heavenly Father once he gives us things. That means gives us the happiness, gives us the trial that's going to lead to something we need to learn. Give all the things in our life, Elder Uchtdorf, grateful in any circumstances. They're all for our good. They're all for our blessing. If we can give thanks back to Heavenly Father for all the things that come to us, as we continue to plant the seeds of happiness in order to harvest more of it in the future and into eternity, if we give thanks for all of it, Will the Lord rebuke the devourer for our sake? 
so that that happiness cannot be consumed, so that happiness cannot be eradicated. I think that's why Heavenly Father gave me this, but I'm learning. I'm trying to figure it out. Will you help me? Will you share with me your thoughts? Am I up in the night? If the Lord gives us things and we give thanks back, and we give thanks as we plant seeds for a happiness harvest in the future, and Satan wants to devour and eradicate and eliminate that happiness, but if we give thanks for those things that the Lord gives us that we can then plant for our future, will he rebuke the devourer for our sakes? I have a testimony that using active gratitude, especially in the middle of difficulty and frustration, does in fact rebuke the devourer. I know that. It changes me. It generates more harvest of happy. It fuels my happy, right? Um, I need your help. Will you message me at Kevin Clayson, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, or comment on this video and let me know, um, am I up in the night? Am I drinking crazy juice? Or is there maybe something there that we could continue to explore together? Can giving thanks for all that we get, whatever it may be, actually allow the Lord to rebuke the devourer for our sakes so that we can harvest all of the happiness that we've planted along the way? It's my testimony that whether that idea is right for the book or not, I know that gratitude does in fact rebuke the devourer. I know that my happiness doesn't have to be eradicated and eliminated as long as I use active gratitude in this way. I know that's true. And I know that I feel closer to the Savior when I use gratitude, especially as I'm giving thanks for even the things that are difficult and tough. I know that's true. And I know that personally, the devourer has been rebuked for me. But is this the idea we want to talk more about? Will you let me know? I share these thoughts and I share that testimony to you that gratitude does in fact rebuke the devourer. Um, and I share that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, thank you for coming on this journey with me. I know I'm, I'm figuring it out, right? Sometimes my best thinking happens out loud. So thank you. I hope you can forgive my sort of ramblings and, and inadequate articulation of these thoughts and ideas. I'm putting it together in real time. Will you help me? <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful Merry Christmas. I love you. I'm so thankful for you. And thank you for tuning in. And please let me know how I can serve you. And I appreciate you guys. Merry Christmas. Love you. See you. Bye.